Hello and welcome. So today I just want to speak about the word of the gospel again. I want to speak about what brings power into our lives. Okay, so uh, you can turn with me to Galatians chapter 3. Oh, you poor and silly and thoughtless and unreflecting and senseless Galatians. So he's not really holding back the punches here. Okay? <laughs> Who has fascinated or bewitched or cast a spell over you unto whom right before your very eyes Jesus Christ was openly and graphically set forth and portrayed as crucified. Let me ask you this one question. Did you receive the Holy Spirit as the result of obeying the law and doing its works, or was it by hearing the message of the gospel and believing it? Was it from observing a law of rituals or from a message of faith? So you, you have to choose between the two. It's either the law of rituals or it is a message of faith. Okay, so how he, he implies by asking this question that we receive the Holy Spirit by hearing and believing the message that we heard. Okay, so what is this message? The message of Jesus Christ dying for the sins of the world, being crucified on the cross to fulfill all, all the law, and that you are now forgiven and set free and declared righteous and justified before God by faith. Okay, so if you hear that and believe that, you are holy and justified before God. So now, if the Holy Spirit is in your life, there will be power. Power to do certain things. Okay, so uh, let's just read on a bit. Verse 5. Then does He who supplies you with His marvelous Holy Spirit and works powerfully and miraculously among you do so on the grounds on, of you are doing what the law demands or because of your believing in and adhering to and trusting and relying on the message that you heard. Thus Abraham believed in and adhered to and trusted and relied on God and it was reckoned and placed to his account and credited as righteousness. Now and understand this, that it is really the people who live by faith who are true sons of Abraham. So you hear the message. As you believe it, it finds entrance into your heart and you receive the Holy Spirit. So if you know that you believe in Jesus Christ, that you are justified, declared righteous, made holy by the blood of Jesus, if you believe that your sins are forgiven because of what Jesus did on the cross, then you have the Holy Spirit. Okay. So when that Holy Spirit comes, you will do wonderful, miraculous and powerful works. Okay. So he says, he asks here, um, then he who supplies you with his marvelous Holy Spirit and works powerfully and miraculously among you do so, so it happens, does he do so on the grounds of you, your doing what the Lord demands or because of you believing the message? Okay, so if you believe the message of the gospel, you will have a continuous supply of the Holy Spirit and you will be able to do powerful and miraculous signs and wonders by faith in Christ. Okay, so uh, just on that ground we can just go to Romans chapter 1 for I am not ashamed of the gospel the good news of Christ for it is God's power working unto salvation for deliverance from eternal death to everyone who believes with a personal trust and confident surrender and firm reliance to the Jew first and also the Greek for in the gospel a righteousness which God ascribes is revealed both springing from faith and leading to faith as it is written, the man who through faith is just and upright shall live and shall live by faith. Okay, so now, the Holy Spirit comes when we believe the gospel of Jesus Christ. The gospel is the power that saves us. Why? Because as we hear and believe the gospel, the Holy Spirit comes and He works powerfully and miraculously among us by a continuous supply of the Holy Spirit. In Romans chapter 10, he says, No one who believes in him will ever be put to shame or be disappointed. So to me, when I read this, I'm not ashamed of the gospel. I see this, that I can speak this gospel boldly. And I can know that this gospel will never drop me. It will never put me to shame. I am not ashamed of the gospel. I never get shame because of the gospel. Because it will always remain true. And there will always be a power released bringing people to salvation. There will always be a power released that heals the sick and raises the dead and do stuff like that. So the forgiveness of sins will give you power 
for the healing of sickness. It will give you power for anything. So the gospel says you are forgiven. And remember the gospel is a power of God. This gospel, it's a message, okay? But this message has Christ inside the message. And when we hear and believe it, that power comes in us. And we are able to do the things that Christ has done. Okay. But you shall receive power, ability, efficiency, and might when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And you shall be my witnesses in Jerusalem and all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. Okay. So, what is a witness? A witness is someone who sees something and then later goes and testifies of what he saw. So, if we so see something that empowers us, we will be able to do works which will bear witness of the power of salvation of the gospel. So, if we hear and believe the message, the Holy Spirit comes with the message and it stirs our hearts and we receive power. Okay? And now that we have the power, we can do works. And th this works testifies to the truth of the message. So if someone preaches to you a legalistic word and there's no signs, wonders and miracles, just take your stuff and go. Go to a place where you can see this, these people are preaching the kingdom of God, pre preaching a word that brings power to the people. Uh, where they lay hands on the sick. There are miracles happening there. Go there and hear what those people are saying. And even then, let the word that the people preach to you be tested by the word. If it's centered in Christ crucified on the cross, if it's centered in the forgiveness that Christ has given us, here, open your heart and you will receive power. But if, if it's centered in you and what you must do to receive power, then I suggest you leave. Okay? <laughs> I think it's really a, a bold thing to say, but really, we need to stop listening to things that disqualify us for power. Okay, so Paul was really, really uh, worked up in Galatians chapter 3. He said to the people, You stupid, senseless, foolish, unreflecting Galatians, who has bewitched you? What happened there? A legalistic word came in. People came in from the side and they tried to bring another gospel, a gospel with works and laws, with the Ten Commandments with Moses. They brought that gospel and Paul was upset. Why was Paul upset? He said, let me ask you this question. Where does the power come from? From you obeying the law or from hearing a message that, and believing it? Okay. So if we hear a message and believe it, we receive that word, that, which is the power of God unto salvation. The Holy Spirit comes with the word and we receive this spirit word in us and it changes us and gives us power and we are able to do the things which God wants us to do okay so uh, and that will make us witnesses <laughs> it will make us see unseen things it will make us know unknown things so that we can go testify to the world and reveal Christ because the world cannot see Christ but the world can see us so if we reveal Christ then the world will be able to see Christ in us Christ is revealed in his church and the only way Christ can be revealed in his church is when people the church believe and receive the Holy Spirit by faith and demonstrate Christ to the world. Okay? So uh, let's go to James chapter 1, verse 18. And it was of His own free will that He gave us birth as sons by His word of truth, so that we should be a kind of first fruits of His creatures, a sample of what He created to be consecrated to Himself. So we were begat, He gave us birth as sons by His word of truth. Okay, so in, in John chapter 1, he says, In the beginning was the Word, the Word was God, the Word was with God, and He was, was in the beginning with God, and all things were made by Him, and without Him was nothing made that was made. And then he says, He, which is the Word, came to His own, but His own received Him not, but as many as did receive Him, gave He power to become sons of God, as many as believe in His name, who owe their birth not to the will of the flesh, neither to bloods, but they are born from above, they are born of God. Okay? So if we hear and believe this message, this message comes, enters our hearts, and when it enters our hearts, this word, which is Christ Himself, comes and becomes flesh in us. And we have the power to become sons of God. Okay, so now, He begat us 
James chapter 1 again. Okay? So, begat means the word became flesh in us, we believed on his name, and we have now received the power to become sons of God. What is that power? The Holy Spirit. We are born of the Spirit. We are born of God. So get rid of all uncleanness and the rampant outgrowth of wickedness. And in a humble, gentle, modest spirit, receive and welcome the word which implanted and rooted in your hearts contains the power to save your souls. But be doers of the word, obey the message, and not merely listeners to it, betraying yourselves into deception by reasoning contrary to the truth. Okay, so how are you doers of the word? Okay, you hear the message of forgiveness. You hear that you can do the things that Christ did when you believe. Then you just go out and you do the works of Christ. Okay, so I hear the message. The message gives me a new birth in Christ. He gave us the power to become sons of God. So now, we have the power to get rid of all uncleanness. How? By receiving the word, which rooted and implanted in our hearts contains the power to save our souls. What is that power? The Holy Spirit. What does that power do? It deactivates the sinful desire in us, and it activates the holy desire in us. So what it does now, is we stop willing to do the things of the flesh. Okay, so then we don't have to try to be something we're not. We're just being. And we are being by a new nature in Christ, which has been imparted to us by grace. So we receive the Holy Spirit. Now we are born of God. And now that Holy Spirit is leading us and giving us new promptings and new desires in the newness of life. And we can do the things that God has called us to do. Which things? Powerful, miraculous signs and wonders and healings and all things that we need to be able to do. Okay? So, what, I what will help you to move in power, to hear the right message, the right word concerning Jesus Christ that died for the sins of the world? If you hear and believe that, then the power comes into you and you are able to do the things that Christ did and even greater things. Okay, so uh, the power of God will come upon you after that the Holy Spirit has come upon you. How does the Holy Spirit come upon you? You hear and believe the message of Jesus Christ. That simple. Okay, 1 Corinthians chapter 1 verse 18. For the story and the message of the cross is sheer absurdity and folly to those who are perishing and on their way to perdition. But to us who are being saved... It is the manifestation of the power of God. So what is the manifestation of the power? The message of Christ crucified. For it is written, I will baffle and may, uh, render useless and destroy the learning of the learned. So your faith is not supposed to be in education. Your faith is supposed to be in the power of God. And the philosophy of the philosophers and cleverness of the clever and the discernment of the discerning. I will frustrate and nullify them and bring them to nothing. Where is the wise man, the philosopher? Where is the scribe? Where is the investigator, the logician, the debater of this present time and age? Has not God shown up the nonsense and folly of this world's wisdom? For when the world, with all its earthly wisdom, failed to perceive and recognize and know God by means of its own philosophy, God in His wisdom was pleased, through the foolishness of preaching, to save those who believed." who clung to, trusted, and relied on Him. For while the Jews demandingly ask for signs and miracles, and Greeks pursue philosophy and wisdom, we preach Christ crucified. Preaching which to the Jews is a scandal and an offensive stumbling block that springs a snare or a trap. And to the Gentiles, it's absurd and utterly unphilosophical nonsense. 